Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Real History. I am your host Jared Frederick and I'm joined by producer Andrew Collins. And we are here today at Eisenhower National Historic Site in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Gettysburg is synonymous with the Civil War battle that takes here in 1863, but that is only the beginning of the story. Because nearly a century later, Gettysburg became the only home that was actually owned by President Dwight D. Eisenhower after World War II. And every September, there are World War II living historians that pitch their tents here on the lawn. And we thought there was no better time than to pick the brains of some reenactors. And what are we going to ask them? We are going to go around, find some of our friends, make some new friends, and ask, what is the best World War II film? But it, and why? And, oh, it, and why? You have to defend your answer. But it cannot be Saving Private Ryan or Made by HBO. So, let's go head out into the camp and see what the answers are. Nate! Such a good team player. Our first stop here at Eisenhower National Historic Site, we are at one of the naval history displays that my good friend Tom Frezza, who is a superb naval historian. And so, we'll ask you a question. What is the best World War II movie and why? Well, uh, I would have to say for, for me, it's, it's a newer production. It's, uh, it's Greyhound, which came out a few years ago. And the reason why this movie stands out to me, it's in the finer details of what they show in the movie. And my, my prime example that I always love telling everybody is, at the beginning of the movie, the ship is low in the water because she's full of fuel, she's full of just everything. And the final shot at the end of the movie shows her riding higher up and out of the water because she just transitioned you know, right across the Atlantic, burning fuel, expending ammunition, and that attention to detail to show like, you know, we, we, we've actually lost weight on the ship and we're rising up and out of the water. You really don't see that in a lot of movies. And that detail, I was sitting there and just saw that and I just went, awesome that there's so many like fine details in that movie but that is the one that just 100 percent just sold me on the movie itself the thing is in the finer details and greyhound is a excellent one and stay tuned because at some point we're going to get this guy to do a full length breakdown of greyhound with us so stay tuned for a future episode and thank you for offering some perspective anytime dewey what is your favorite World War II film and why? Anything with a puppy in it. Here we are with my friend Chris Coons, a Marine and historian extraordinaire. So, I'll pose the question to you. The best World War II film and why? Mm. Is that the real deal? Uh, so I'm going to go with Flags of Our Fathers. So I Big surprise. Natu naturally, yes. Big surprise. Uh, so for the Flags of Our Fathers, um, but a lot of people are kind of disappointed that it's not just a hardcore war fighting movie the whole time. Uh, so I enjoy the fact that it does portray a little like the, the aftermath, the repercussions of actually going and fighting in a war. And for the actual war scenes itself, uh, I think it does a phenomenal job of actually showing the Marines in combat the nitty-gritty of what it was like to be on Iwo Jima and for the the guys who love the gear and uniforms and everything it's probably the most realistic in terms of the correct gear the correct uh, uniforms they're wearing uh, they, they even got the the correct year of finish. canteen cover and everything that they they were right. issued out so by far I think Iwo Jima is probably or Flags of Our Fathers is, is my favorite World so War II movie. And you had right some right associates who yeah. worked yes. in a technical aspect on the film. Yep, uh, yeah, so uh, I represent the United States Marine Corps Historical Company here at Ike's Farm, uh, and the director of the historical company is Gunny Tom Williams, who unfortunately isn't present here right now, uh, but he was the technical advisor for that. And if you see the flamethrower scene at the very beginning during the landing, uh, where the, the guy runs up to the bunker and squirts it with a bunch of flame, 
that is actually Tom Williams, not the actor who is using the flamethrower oh, okay. for it. Okay, right, so very cool. Good insider right, so perspective. <laughs> and what I like about that film is that it shows not only the cost of war, but the cost of celebrity oh, yeah. as well. Yes. <laughs> How that really grades on some people oh, yeah. thrown into the wartime spotlight. <laughs> Thank you for sharing some perspective with us. Absolutely. So we're here with our new friend, Jamie, and what unit are you portraying? So we're doing the 7th Battalion Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders in North Africa in 1942. Awesome, and yeah. I'll point out too that the theme of the event this year at the Eisenhower Farm is the year 1942, and it's great to get all these different global perspectives in the process. So I'll pose the same <clears throat> question to you that we've been posing to other living historians here. All right. What is the best World War II film and why? So that's a really difficult question to answer, but I think I'm going to say A Bridge Too Far is a classic World War II movie. I mean, just look at the cast who's in that. There's lots of World War II veterans in that movie. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a child going to Blockbuster and renting the two cassettes. Two cassette tape. Two, yes. such a long uh -huh. movie. Two uh -huh. cassettes. And yeah. I watched that with uh, my mother's friend's husband who served in the Pacific Theater and uh -huh. loved to watch it with me. Okay. So I sat with a War II veteran and watched that movie. So I have very fond memories of always watching that. That's awesome. And I think that has a special place in my heart. Yeah. So I think it is fairly accurate. There's some things you could say that are wrong with it, but for the time, yeah. it's a great war too. Yeah, movie. yeah. And never underestimate the importance of nostalgia. When right, exactly. I'm a very these, nostalgic we all, person. We, all, we so. always have uh, personal connections to them. What do you th Who has the best performance in that movie of the all-star cast? There's Ugh. so many of them. I who, mean, who's it's the best? sound really cliche, but Sean Connery yeah. is always just, it's Sean Connery. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I think you could say any one of the people doing it did a great job. But yeah. Sean Connery is my favorite. Yeah, so. that's a, a great answer. Thank yeah. you for chiming into the discussion. Oh, you're very welcome. So, All thank right. you for uh, spending some time. Thank you. Yeah. I'm here with Fireman Fred, our, our new friend, who uh, portrays a medic. Tell us a little bit about your uh, impression here at the camp. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I'm not a medic. I'm actually the medical officer, and my specific duty today is the venereal disease doctor. So the uh, Army took a very serious view of venereal disease, as thousands and thousands of young men were unable to participate in World War I, and it was the same thing. If, if they had caught an enemy bullet, they're out of action. So there's a multi-layered defense. And in a lot of ways, it's an interesting thing to the public. You know, yeah. there's a certain thing the public is always interested about, but they're afraid to ask. You know, yeah. like, how do you go to the bathroom? And those type, types of questions, you know. So, you know, sort of sexual uh, uh, and, and hygiene, those types of topics, yeah. we present those in an appropriate manner and kind of promote some interest into and gets them into our tent so they can see yeah. the, the broader aspect of the medical yeah. core in World War II. I, I think it's a great angle and a fascinating topic. So uh, I'll pose the question to you as well. What do you think is the best World War II movie and why? Okay, why? So I remember seeing all kinds of war movies, black and white with my dad when I was a kid, but I think the one that stood out to me was a, was a one that depicted the Eastern Front, so Cross of Iron. Ah, yes. And so it was- James in, Coburn. It was in color and it had actual uh, Russian tanks and actual German artillery. It wasn't just uh, an American tank painted gray with a with a black cross on the side. So I like mm -hmm. the realism and I like the different weapons and the different aspects of warfare. And so uh, I, I, I learned a lot and it yeah. prompted me to read more. So I think that's that yeah. was my favorite film. The gritty Sam Peckinpah movie, uh, and he was well known for his his violence. Um, and a lot of his films, including westerns as well. So I, I think that's a great pick. All right, thanks. Th thanks for offering your input. Absolutely. We're here at Continue to Roam Camp, and I'm running into so many great friends. Please introduce yourself to the audience. Tell us what your impression is and what you're talking to folks about. So I'm John W. McCaskill. I love John W. McCaskill, History Alive. I am here with the Allied Airmen's Preservation Society, which is a group that I belong to. My impression is the 332nd Fighter Group. We know them by 1970-something as the Tuskegee Airmen, African-American aviators who earned the opportunity to fly combat during World War II. 
And what is your best pick for a World War II film? What's your favorite and why? Well, actually, I have two. My Go for it. One. My first one is Torah, Torah, Torah. Based on Gordon Prang, Prang's book, At Dawn We Slept. And once you read the book and you go through the movie, you see the, the movies closely follows the book. And there's even one scene in the movie where General Short is flying over, um, he's flying over the harbor. And he just, and it's like one sentence. Oh, it's only about 40, to 40, 40 feet deep, right? Now, you could do a movie on the depth of Pearl Harbor and, <laughs> and why they thought it was, in, it was defensible, but just one sentence. And, they're, and they've gotten so much information into the length of the movie. Right. And it's probably one of the most accurate movies. I would I've agree. Seen. It plays out almost like a documentary. Oh my it's goodness! It's like yes. a living document almost. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And absolutely. of course, you've got you've got producers in Japan and the United States working together. It was absolutely amazing. So it's not really a one-sided thing. Right. It's telling both sides from both perspectives. Right. And it's a very effective movie. Yeah. Now that's absolutely. that's number one. My second is Twelve O'clock High. Oh, Gregory Peck. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Tremendous movie, and it is hard to keep the people's attention in a war movie where there's no war footage. The war footage doesn't show until the very end of the movie, and it's actual footage. But I think the thing that was most convincing to me, reading Donald Miller's um, Masters of the Air and other things on the Army Air Forces, the thing that captures me the most is the fact that veterans who were there say that the movie is probably the most accurate movie that they've seen. So anytime somebody asks me this question, it's those two, Torah, 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 and uh, 12 o'clock high. Those are two great choices. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, sir. All right. We're now joined by Chelsea and John, who have another great historical display among many others here. And they have not only thought of a movie, but perhaps more so a particular scene from a movie. So what is this really accurate scene from a movie that you'd like to talk about? Well, the movie is Fury. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one scene that's related to the Signal Corps, since that's what our display is about. Um, if you want to take over, John? Yeah, so um, in the very beginning of Fury, um, I guess after, you know, he oh so accurately jumps out of the tank and like kills that German officer <laughs> on an oh so accurate horse. Um, they're coming back into the camp and um, everybody makes fun of those little like lower your damn antenna signs. It's uh -huh. the Red Ball Express or whatever it is. And in it, uh, in fury, he jumps up and grabs the antenna and uh -huh. he tucks it uh -huh. um, as they're coming back into camp. Right. Because um, according to uh, morning reports, you know, archives, the most common damage to the U.S. Army Signal Corps' wired communication systems were, in this order, German artillery, that makes sense, <laughs> yes. and Sherman tanks. Oh, wow. Because the Sherman tanks' antennas were so tall uh -huh. that this wire um, would get snagged on the antennas and they would break it. Thank you both for your perspectives and some of your great authentic traits here. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you from John and Chelsea from Be Historical. <laughs> Thank you. Check out their website.